was it intentional and he didn't want to be found. This pond up here is a perfect scenario. This is the type of stuff that I'm looking for. And if you look at this also, we had other guardrails or posts that were in here before. Yeah, we might have something over here. Back over here, right there, what is that? who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. We want to welcome you back to day two on our search for Guy Pike, who went missing 23 years ago in 1999. He was driving a 1989 Chevy Blazer, dark blue in color with a black top and diamond running boards. We have been searching and helping his only granddaughter, Jennifer, who was just 18 years of age at that time when he went missing, we're trying to help her find her grandfather. Yesterday, we spent a full day of searching. We went and we searched Route 11. We made our way onto Highway 58. Of those nine locations yesterday, some might say, Jared, you came up empty handed, but we didn't. We gave Jennifer those answers as to where her grandfather was not. So today as we start our search, over here in Dexter, out on the island, the boat ramp, Pillar Point, back towards Watertown, we're gonna continue giving Jennifer those answers as to where her grandfather either is or is not today. So fingers crossed, we're gonna bring him home. And if you've not yet seen episode number one on our search yesterday, the link is in the description down below. We appreciate each and every one of you for being here with us today. So this morning, our significance as we get started of this location is that yesterday we were talking to Gary, Jennifer's cousin, and, he, and for some reason, all three of them were kind of pointing like Dexter, 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 but I kept trying to ask them, like, what's the tide of Dexter? You know, like 180, if you ever went up 11, across on 58, up to Canada, would you ever take, you know, what was the number I just said, 180 back into town here? And none of them brought me to this location. However, the only reason we are here is we just want to make sure that we clear the Black River. It was part of uh, Jennifer's concern, as well as what Gary was saying yesterday about there being potential vehicles that have been recovered from in here before. And so in talking to the uh, chief and his father used to be the uh, chief beforehand, he said that other than one vehicle over on the other side on Linden that accidentally rolled in, there's never been any vehicles in here, Nick. But we want to check it off the list while we're here, and then we'll continue on our uh, route today. Yeah, see, then we only get up to four feet right here, so coming off the ramp, four feet only right here. You have a potential for a drive in and it's actually getting deeper over here. So we want to focus on areas like that, not just boat ramps when we're out here scanning. Uh, yeah, we might have something over here. Really? Back over it here. It's in 15 feet of water. Right there, what is that? So what it is, it's like a big log and a big shelf that drops off. So we can clearly see it here. Oh, uh, yep. We can clearly see it there. It gets down to 15 to 
16 or so, back up to five, and then it drops back down to eight feet in here. So location number one for today is clear. On to the next. So when I first talked to Jennifer about her grandfather, um, she had mentioned Pillar Point. Pillar Point was a really strong, you know, there was a strong vibe there. Okay. From where we're at, Pillar Point is a stone throw to the west. Okay. So 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 bring me up to speed with Pillar Point and what's pulling you there, and and where this information came from, and. Well, again, as we went over yesterday, we can't really take what psychics and mediums say as. I'm going to tell you the first exactly. the first one I know here the first one we find that is 100% yes I'm going to use them on every case. <laughs> so, I am at this it point It was a point that was mentioned. Okay. It's that close. Okay. I'm here for you. So, <laughs> if we don't check it off, you're going to be like especially if somebody finds them later, then you'll be like, "Jared, you never listen to me and you never I'm I'm a family member and you I always would, say you listen to family members." I so. would I would never <laughs> do that to you. Perfect. Let's go hit pillar point then. seemed to be private property up there. The shoreline that went out, we saw it on drone. It went out probably 100, 150 yards before it even dropped off to something that would you know, hide a potential vehicle. But it's all private property as well. You're not getting to it. It's not an accident location. It's not a, hey, I'm coming out looking for an on-purpose location either for what we were able to identify. So we're gonna head back into Dexter now, out to the island and continue on our journey today of the three, four locations we have on our map. And then we're gonna start heading down Highway 11 towards Syracuse and just look for any of those possible accident locations that if he was up here north in Watertown, decided to head home, did he have an accident? Good, good, good. Good to meet up with you. Yeah, my next thought is, you know, he's from Syracuse and, you know, Route 11 was his route. So, I mean, we've already right. done 11, 58 up to the Canadian border yesterday. Right. So once we, you know, finish this location yeah. and check anything else. Plus we've had, uh, since then, we've had two major floods here. We had a 500 year flood here right. a few years ago. And anything that, uh, you know, that was of any size went down river. Right. It uh, basically flushed the whole area. Yeah. You know, of, of, of anything of size. Down through here until you get to the coves, that's all flat bottom. Okay. There, it's all flat stone limestone. Right. And that. Yeah, some pretty rocky up around oh, here. Oh, yeah. I really like it. But this thing, you know, the current is, is, is terrible. Right. I, I never dove between uh, Brownville and the coves. I dove the coves and the river below the dam. But up there, the, the current is too confined and okay. way too strong. It, uh, well, perfect. Yeah, we'll clear around the island, and then uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to focus on 11 back south to uh, Syracuse. Uh -huh. Right. It's going to be our route today. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it's shallow here. Yeah, we're only five feet up here. Nothing. Now what I'm going to be looking for off of this little island here, Nick, is a potential just to drive off. Where we launched from, we had a boat ramp. But I'm thinking in terms of this, more thinking about dementia and the potential of this is just an accident. I, pull, I, came, I pulled in on the island. Um, I got confused and I had the opportunity to accidentally just drive right off, not realizing where I was going. Now these orange markers here, the dams after 2001, after 
Uh, most of the dams started putting up barriers where you could not enter certain zones and a lot of them are going to have cameras up here on top as well. Now pre you know 2001 yes they still had barriers but now there's an actual hey it's illegal to go within those zones now and don't take the risk. But right up here you can see a little road up, road up there there's a guardrail up there so that's what I'm going to be interested in up there. Focus a little bit more on this to see what it is and on side scan. So, you know, is it a vehicle? You, know, you have stuff up against it. I don't know. We got to hit it at some different angles to identify what it may or may not be. But in my opinion, also based upon where the boat ramp is at, you have to take into consideration the current, and in my opinion, it's not going to be a vehicle out here. Very, very unlikely. So that is our interest right there that we want to go check out again. Then you start looking at shore and anything that may have taken place. So then you start looking at the shore as you're coming into it and pinpointing exactly where it's at. In this direction, it's just the way the rocks come up. So now you start getting into, if you come look at this, it's that limestone slate that they were talking about that's around here. And so it's just the way that it's broken off and laying in here. So then you see that they're all the same pattern. A couple of tires out here. See locations like this though, you know, right next to the parking lot area from up above. Perfect depth. None of this is out of the question for sure. An old boat ramp like that that you just get confused. So many locations and possibilities. Yeah, I think all these little pylons across here is like an old uh, debris jam or something to prevent things from going in. Or maybe it was like a bridge out to the island. I'm not sure. All right, well, that's going to clear this island. A couple of tires, no vehicle in this location. A couple of big trees. Um, so we'll keep on heading up the road back towards 11 and then make our way down south from there. All right, so we have a little pull off somewhere. Yeah, it's right here. There's like a little hidden right where that Jeep just pulled out from there on the right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in here, we're gonna pull up historical aerials, and we're gonna see if this pull off was or was not here at that time. Because this is 100% certainly could be one of those accident locations. The, the more and more dementia accident, not driving accident. And, and there's a difference in dementia accident versus accident. An accident is more along the lines of, hey, I'm just cruising right along and boom, I end up you know, off the side of the road into a river. Whereas a dementia is more like you pull into a parking lot like this and you get a little confused and you end up hit, you know, you think that that's the direction you should still be going and you end up in a body of water. That's a dementia um, accident. And then you have the, hey, I'm checking out for sure. This also fits that criteria uh, dementia as well as checking out because it sits up higher with a off into the water that's going to be deeper. We know it's deeper or I know it's deeper because it's close to a dam and on the upside of dams is where the water is deeper. And I can never get historical aerials to work on my phone properly so we'll just pull it up right here. All right so there's Watertown. We're up on 12 right now on the north side there's Glen, and so I want to zoom into where we're at. We want to look at 2003. Yep, sure enough, it's not here. So it looks like it's like an old house that was used to be here. Mm, yep. So with the house being there, I would say no, because right. you, you would have to go through somebody's driveway on this right. one. There used to be a house 
right here and this was the driveway coming in so let's make our way back we'll pick up your rig jeff and dan's rig and then we'll start on route 11 and start making our way south towards syracuse sounds great all right when i was very young i was kind of spoiled <laughs> at his house where I live now. We had a couple of horses, so the yard was all fenced in, and he always did a lot with the horses. When my grandma got sick and they put her on hospice, I kept her in her house. So, you know, we had the hospital bed in the living room, and that's where she passed. So between that and obviously, you know, every time I walk out my door, I'm like, you know, this is the driveway he left from. It, it's a lot. <laughs> when she passed away in 2012, that May, so May of 2012, I believe would have been their 50th anniversary. And I'll never forget begging my grandfather, begging, 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 begging. Can't we just go get ice cream? Can't we just go get ice cream? Sure enough, on our way to get ice cream, he turned right on red and then was speeding and we got pulled over and he got two tickets. <laughs> and I will never forget that day because he told me forever after that, you know, if you didn't have to go for ice cream, I would have never got that ticket. I do like all these little towns in this part of the state. Yeah, so, you know, and with that, I could see why Guy would take all of these little, you know, this, this Route 11 versus 81. Despite him liking to drive faster, which he could definitely go a lot faster on 81, I would prefer Route 11. I'm gonna say no on this one. Yeah, it's too small. Yeah, shallow, moving for pretty quick through there. Zero access to get through there. It's more of a, 90 to the right, another 45 miles to go. All right, so we've got a river through here, so we'll identify if there's any, come across this bridge, any access into the river here. Yeah, so this is solid through here. Yeah. Double fence. Wow, combat fishing. And they're, oh, look, they're all standing in there. Look at that, combat all that. Fishing. Wow, they are fishing everywhere. Wow. This pond up here is a perfect scenario as to a potential accident off the road up here. This looks like it's been here quite a while, but there's no guarantee that it's been here uh, since 99. Right. But I'm seeing also that if a vehicle would have made it from this road down there, you'd think there'd be some sort of evidence, although you wouldn't see it now. But don't you think um, there's a fire hydrant? But, but here, here's what I saw as I rolled up to it. While we have, you know, may or may not have been here in 99, this is the type of stuff that I'm looking for, is, is we veer before this even starts, and you can absolutely veer off into here. And if you look at this also, we had other guardrails or posts that were in here before. So when were, when were these ones replaced and put in here versus the old ones here, or is that just a sign that was here? So I'm gonna go knock on the door. We'll keep cameras back and I definitely wanna clear this one. I, I cannot leave this one behind. The old lady that used to live there, Miss Walters, let my kids fish there. Okay. It's not really too deep, but over there by the, before that might be a deep enough pot. Right. Yeah, 
seven feet, we're plenty deep. Yeah, now we're, now we're only at three and a half here. Yeah, unfortunately we're only uh, 2.1 to three feet here. Nothing hiding out in here. Even after 23 years, it's not going to uh, silt in that much for a pond like this. But let's uh, jump over to the other side while we're here. Three and a half, four. Okay, we're getting deeper here, five. Yeah, max is only four out here. I uh, just got done speaking with um, Jennifer. You know, she's never even seen this pond before. And she's, she said, yeah. yeah, she's driven this a hundred times, she said. And uh, you know, that's where, you know, just coming into it, looking at it with a fresh set of eyes in a different way. It's like, you know, we're drawn to the water. That's what we're interested in. Situations just like this is where I would expect to find them for that accident or dementia accident location, so. I think we still have another 35-ish miles or so, so let's keep heading down the road and fingers crossed we can find another one where he is and we can finally give her the answer she's looking for. I was really hopeful on that one, Nick. We actually got a, uh, another body of water coming up right here that might be a potential candidate for us too, Nick. All right, so somewhere right here, yeah, we got way too much foliage you're not getting through that at all. And those are oak trees too. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's up? Um, so my dad just called me and he made mention to me as we're going up this way, um, right, probably, I think like, seven eight miles from here you're gonna cross over a green bridge that goes over a river okay um it's gonna be just if you get into Brewerton. um he said there never back then there was no guardrails or anything there he said there's like big timber there now but there was never anything there before okay um he said you like you could just drive right in there if that's what you wanted to do back then okay. You know, in our conversations yesterday and today, like nothing indicated he was a river gawker type of a person. So I'm having a hard time with him just pulling off like, hey, I'm on my way home. I just want to look at the river one last time before I go home. No, they made it sound like when he's going somewhere, it's deliberate, there's not really stops. He's staying off the main highways, taking his own, like 11 is his main route that he always travels. Right. So with this here, Jennifer, you know, th this entire area down here looks new. So, you know, if your dad or you know anything about the area, I, I can look it up on the, you know, historic aerials as well, but do you know, know anything about this town and the way this has been laid out 20 years ago? Well, my dad did tell me that like, nothing was there. It was wide open. Okay. And he explained like anybody could drive off Route 11 and just right in the trail. Okay, no, and, and that makes sense coming that direction, especially if there was no building there, so. Okay, well, we'll, we'll scan, you know, both sides of it up and down a little bit. Looks like we have another area over there that's a little open, but especially this area right here that you just, you know, got done mentioning where the pier restaurant is at that wasn't there. We'll definitely check that out. So let's see how we can get the uh, boat in here. vehicle there on the first one. You're at uh, 10 feet deep right here. Yeah, now we're down to only four feet coming through this section here.
nothing down there. I'm coming up empty handed. Like, how are you feeling from all this right now? Overwhelmed, but grateful. I can eliminate a lot of places. But just at a loss. Between here and home, how, how many miles are we from the house at this moment in time? I don't know exactly. I'm not sure. 10, 15? Maybe 15, okay, so maybe give or take. Any more bodies of water that you've noticed over time? Onondaga Lake. Okay. And we're crossing over that or we're going next we'll to it? We'll go right next to it. Okay. And does the road, does 11 go right next to it? 11 doesn't, no. Well, he probably would have continued like 11 through the city and then up that way. Well, let's do this then. Let me just take continue to take the lead down 11. Okay. And then just call me when we're like within a mile or two of, hey, this is the route that he would turn to go home. We'll have you jump in front of us at that moment and we'll continue to follow you at that point. Okay. Does that work? Do you, do you want me to take you down what way he would have, like even through this city and yes. up through? I, I, I want to, through all of this, I want to end up okay. near where your driveway is at. You know, I, we're not, we're not going to take people into your driveway, but I want to be close to your neighborhood at that point. It's like 100% Jared, there's no more water. Okay. But for right now, I want to continue down 11. That would have been his route. And then let me know when it's time to turn and okay. I'll, I'll follow you to the house from there. Okay. Okay. up on the left there. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's Syracuse, New York over there on the left here. And then we've got the canal, I think is what this is that she was uh, referencing earlier. And it drops out into the lake. So this is the lake near where her grandpa worked over in this area. So if there was any easy access into there, I would 100% be interested in it. The lake itself is 10 miles long, so by the time you go, or four, five miles long, so you got 10 miles down and back plus over and over, so you're probably looking at 16 miles of shoreline there. That would take roughly five hours or so if you were to uh, scan the shoreline. But because of that big, big project, big uh, dredging project, that takes that off the uh, list there. But I'm interested if we have any more water on the way down. Besides the rain here, of course. All right, so we are coming up within a quarter mile at this point of Atchison Road, where Guy used to live. We ran out of bodies of water. We've covered everything from the Canadian border all the way down here. This is the longest, furthest search that we've ever done, Nick. Yeah, that was a long one. We covered a lot of ground, several yeah. bodies of water. And, and there's a lot of water between here and there, but the, you know, the mission with this one was to identify, did we have particularly any type of an accident that would have been along that route for him on his way home? Right. And you know, this is one of those things that, you know, I wish that we could have given Jennifer, you know, here's where your grandfather's at. He's now home, but we don't yet have that for her. But we do have the answer as to, you know, where he's not. Right. Feeling it now. <laughs> we, we, we were just talking about that coming up the hill, you know, that, you know, like Jennifer right now is in the vehicle all by herself, that we went everywhere from the Canadian border all the way back down here. And that with this, you know, it was the, we have covered 100% of any accident location for you from, you know, what is that? 90 to 100 miles. It's the biggest distance we've ever covered for anybody. I wish that I had the answers to. I'm grateful for all of it. 
it with me. <laughs> now is when I'm losing. <laughs> you don't have to lose it, so. You know? Answers, you know? We have answers for you as to where he's not. I know it doesn't bring him home yet. But now this brings into, you know, questions. I mean, further questions, you know? Now do, do, I'm yeah. Frustrated that, with that, I'm like frustrated now. I feel like I'm, I'm leaning more towards now. Like, was it intentional and he didn't want to be found? that just keeps going through my head. <laughs> you know, so, so now, you know, we come back next year. You know, we look at this differently. That we go from his house. We look at this five mile radius from his house and his work. Do we look at the canal? He knows this canal. He knows this lake like the back of his hand. We, at this point, I think we've ruled the lake out that was next to his to his work because of all the dredging that took place over the course of 10 years. But do we bring in, you know, the canal? Is there easy access to it? He's a local to this. This is his backyard that he's local to. He would go north at times to visit, but this is his neighborhood. This is his backyard. And so I know you don't want to wait another year, but let me tell you, next year we'll come back and we'll spend another day or two and we'll do look at this differently we're going to take the accent out of it and i know you don't want to nobody wants to be like you know my loved one did this intentionally that's the way i feel now and i hope and i hope that we're all wrong but let's clear those areas for you do we have anything to the north the south the east or the west from here the canal i mean i crossed over the canal and it's like although he's not going off the bridge in an accident this is his backyard. What does he know about that canal? He right. drove across that canal every single day or near it, you know, for work. I don't have that answer right now. Nobody does. Yeah. But we'll come back and we'll give you some, you know, some more answers. This road right here is really my last um, hopeful spot. Oh, look what you got over here. Oh, I gotta circle back around over it. What is it? I don't know. 